<clears throat> Yahweh, the righteous, just, and personal creator God who reveals himself to us and encounters us. Jewish theology also talks about that. Islam does not talk about God encountering us. Uh, Judaism does. Um, God is also referred to as Elohim in the Old Testament, which refers to God as the creator and sustainer of the universe, God Almighty. That's a very Islamic understanding, as it is also a Christian understanding. But God is Yahweh, the God who comes down and meets us to save us, the God who reveals himself to us so that we may know him. God is Yahweh. That understanding of God, which bursts upon the... Uh, history of the world in God meeting Moses at the burning bush, that revelation of God is distinctively biblical and particularly distinctively, I should say, is distinctively Christian uh, and also, also Jewish. Although Jews don't much talk about God's encounter with us, they rather talk much more about, um, about the will of God, God's revealing his will to us. But within the Christian faith, God, God meeting us, knowing him as loving Heavenly Father, God coming down to save us is a distinctive. Years ago when I took world religions in a secular atheistic university in the USA, um, um, my professor of world religions used to say that um, a distinctive of the Christian faith is that God as Yahweh has come down and he meets us and reveals himself to us, the righteous personal God encounters, he meets. That's distinctive. That's a distinctive of the Christian faith. I was recently um, reading a book by E. Stanley Jones, and this is what he says. Uh, I've never lived in India, so I cannot, I cannot attest to what he says, but this is what he says about his travel. He lived in India for many, many years, and about his travels from one end of India to the other. He says he would ask people and India is a very, very religious society, as you know. He would ask these very religious people, um, do you know God? He'd ask the Muslims that question. He would ask the Hindus that question in the north, the south, the east, the west of India. Do you know God? And he says the answer he always got was, no, we don't know God. So here is a very religiously sensitive culture. No, we don't know God. We know about God. We know about God, but we don't know God. And then he says he would ask them, well, how could I know God? And e. Stanley Jones says the answer he always gets when he, asks, when, he, when, he answers, when he asks that question is, go and ask the Christians. Go and ask the Christians. And he says the word is out all across India that God in Christ, God of the Bible, who has come down to meet us, is distinctive to biblical faith. And outside of that revelation, we really don't know God. But in Christ, God has come down to meet us and to reveal God to us. Knowing God, which leads us to Jesus Christ, distinctive. Uh, recently, there was a, theol a, a historian in the USA, professor uh, at, uh, at the Penn State University in Pennsylvania, his name is uh, uh, Jenkins, Philip Jenkins. Recently, he wrote a book on the global spread of the church around the world. And then I heard him interviewed on National Public Radio shortly after that. And they asked him, on National Public Radio, how do you account for this global spread of the church around the world, the rapid growth of the church? What's going on? What's happening? Why is this taking place? This Jenkins says, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. That's why the church is growing. Jesus is the healer. And I say, when I say that, I don't mean necessarily the healing of the body, although that may be a dimension of what Jesus brings into a person's experience. But I mean the healing of the person, the forgiveness, uh, the, 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 uh, the shalom, the well-being, uh, the, the, uh, yeah, the healing of the person. Jesus is the reason for the rapid growth of the church. I think he's exactly right. That when I travel to cultures here and there and ask the question, why have you become a Christian? Always at the top 
<laughs> uh, the response is, it's because of Jesus. In Jesus, I've found the one that I need, and the one who needs me, of course. He needs us in his kingdom, Jesus. What else? The crucifixion. <clears throat> Hans Kuhn, in his book uh, called On Being a Christian, says that when you think of all of the distinctives of the Christian faith in a world of many religions, probably the most significant distinctive is the cross. Jesus Christ, God with us, suffering with us and because of us on the cross. Those outstretched arms of Jesus on the cross, God with us, inviting us to forgiveness and to reconciliation. Outstretched arms are for embracing, for inviting. Jesus on the cross. In all religions, he said, the God or the gods that people worship is invulnerable, never suffers because of us, never, you know. He is supreme, he is invulnerable. He may be known as coming with the clenched fist, or maybe the divinity or this, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 that, that people worship come to us like this, which means I won't embrace you, you're on your own. It's a very sort of Buddhist uh, uh, gesture, isn't it? Or like this oftentimes, the Buddhist gesture, you know, meaning you're on your own, you're your own savior. But God in Christ on the cross, arms outstretched, inviting us to reconciliation, to healing and to restoration. The cross is a distinctive of the Christian faith. And related to the cross is the atonement. Christ crucified in whom God has taken our place, thereby the forgiveness of sins is promised and assured. And I think I mentioned to you, I asked Paul Young Hee Cho in Korea a couple years ago, why so many Buddhists across Korea are becoming believers in Jesus. And he put his finger on this statement right here, that in Christ, God has taken our place and we are forgiven in what he did on the cross for us. That good news of the forgiveness of sins um, is a gift of the Christian faith, which is absolutely amazing. And related to that is redemption, redeeming us from sin, inviting us to new life and salvation, um, and all that that means, both now and eternally. When I wrote this book with Katarega, The Dialogue, I wanted every chapter to be parallel. And my dear Muslim friend said, David, I don't want to write a chapter on salvation, however. He said, you write a Christian chapter on salvation, but as a Muslim, I don't know about salvation. I know about God sending his will down that I should submit to, but salvation, no, that's not language we talk about within Islam. We talk about submitting to the will of God and hoping that in the final judgment, God will count us worthy because we've done so many good deeds to enter into paradise, but we don't know, we don't know. So you write your chapter on salvation. So I wrote a chapter on salvation in this book, and he wrote a chapter on submitting to God's will. The gift of salvation, a distinctive of the Christian faith. TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.